Okay, so take a look at this. These are slime molds. They're basically little amoebas, and they basically, like, roll around like little amoebas. But then something in their environment will happen that stimulates them to say, number one, we're starving to death. We need some food. Usually it's a bad thing that happens, and then they come together. And they, they were independent little amoebas, and look at how they're joining together. And they join together to make a slug-like critter that can actually move around and go hopefully find a better place to live. And then they work together to make basically their, their baby making tools. They're going to make spores and reproduce. And all of the critters, this isn't one critter. This is all of them working together. The ones who are in the end are the ones that are going to actually um, make their babies. Wait a second. Come back here. Come back to this. Pause. Okay. That's a whole group of them. That's like our whole class deciding, dude, let's make some babies, except we're going to have to put someone up at the top in order to make the baby, and everybody else is going to be like a pyramid at the bottom to holding them up. Okay, this analogy is really disturbing. But the cells up here get to pass on their genes. These cells down here don't because they're just the stock. How do you decide? Like, who decides who gets to pass on their genes? Well, they all work together to make it happen. They'll make some babies, and then they go back to being little free slime molds all over again. They also, if they get stimulated to come together, if the chemical message comes out saying, hey, you guys, come over here. I don't know if you can see this. I, this is a nice visual as well. So these are all the individuals. The message gets sent. Something bad is happening. It's we're starving or something. So chemicals get sent out, and then they all combine. They can turn into a slug that can move to a place that has more food. They move to the place that has more food, and then they grow this little, like, I think they're becoming a slug right here because look at how it's going to fall over and flap, and now it's moving. It's a slug. But it wasn't a slug. It was a whole bunch of independent things, and now it's going to grow into that fruiting body and that spore, and the guys on top are stoked, and the guys on the bottom. Look, these guys all got left behind. They're like, wait a minute. We wanted our chance in the sun. We wanted to be the fruiting body. Okay, you get the idea. Can you see the advantages of multicellularity? Think about us. What if all of our cells, like, did their own thing and had their own consciousness? Like, we would just be amoebas. But instead, like, however many 10 trillion cells decided to work together and communicate with each other and coordinate actions with each other, critters are so cool. All right. So slime molds actually have multicellularity by choice. But single-celled protists do exist. They just don't all share the same common ancestor. Okay. The next thing we get to talk about, we're going to focus in on um, two branches of the, whatever this is, cladogram. We're going to talk about the fungi and the plants in the next lecture. Bye-bye.